Amagi Metals, where financial freedom is yours. Since it was established in October 2006, the Joint MRAP Vehicle Program has delivered over 26,000 MRAP vehicles to Iraq and Afghanistan. This is the largest acquisition program for the Department of Defense since World War II. The MRAP is not a single vehicle. It's not a single manufacturer. The MRAP is a team, a team of thousands of dedicated people and hundreds of suppliers worldwide. Navstar is one manufacturer of MRAPs, headquartered just outside Chicago. Their employees cranked out over 9,000 of the vehicles under the name Max Pro. Another company, BAE Systems, made thousands more MRAPs under the badge Cayman. Now, thanks to the Defense Logistics Agency, a program began decades ago which distributes excess military hardware such as grenade launchers, helicopters, military robots, M16 rifles, and armored vehicles to agencies at the federal, state, and local level. Over 2,700 MRAPs are slated to be distributed across the United States. When in Chicagoland as part of the police accountability tour, we stopped by the Maryville, Indiana Police Outfit, where an MRAP was just received for the Northwest Indiana Regional SWAT Team, which oversees nine towns that have populations between 9 and 35,000. I was hoping to be able to speak with someone about the MRAP vehicle. What about it? Uh, just the need for it in a community like this. Well, we have a tactical team that uses that. Has it been used for anything where it's, it's been better had than, you know, not had? I, you know what, I couldn't even tell you because I'm not on the tactical team. What if a vehicle like a tank were offered to the police outfit here? Would that be accepted as well? You never know what you might need. I mean, if you have a hostage situation, if you have somebody barricaded, you know, holding innocent people, you might need a vehicle that's fortified to protect the officers when they're trying to help somebody. But the MRAP just seems like it's, I don't know, anti-missile or something? It, it just seems like totally well, unnecessary in the United States. You never know if you would be coming to a terrorist attack. The War on Terror is security theater. It's, it's you know, trying to, trying to grow the police apparatus here under this guise of protection. I mean, if public safety, at the end of the day, is the, is the goal, then if you say a certain group of people has a right to steal from others, to then protect them, you know, I don't think you're going to get safety ever through an institution like that. Instead, it has, it's an institution, you know, that does the exact opposite. All I know is we're here to answer calls for people that say that they need help. If somebody's stealing from them, if they're being hurt, you know, we're, we're there to answer the phone and we're there to, you know, to go into any situation. Well, again, to go back to his question, if, if someone's getting stolen from, I mean, that could be called, that's what taxation is, correct? It's, it's not voluntary, correct? Well, when you live in the United States, you have to pay your taxes. Take care. All right, take Thank care. Thank you. Have a great night. Peace. Okay. His, his interest was in public safety and helping people, but unfortunately, I don't see that type of vehicle as being one that's going to be used to help people. I see it as one that's going to be used to scare and intimidate people, maybe ram through the drawer of a, at the door of a drug dealer or something like that. That's what we use to deliver our our, um, our team to uh, high risk warrant services. We can actually shoot from within the vehicle. But I really don't see, you know, in the United States, the yeah. IEDs, terrorism. I don't think that's something that's commonplace. It's a nice guy. He's caught up in an extortion racket, though, unfortunately. Yes, sir. Do you feel safer knowing that MRAPs are now being distributed across the states to places like High Springs, Florida, Nampa, Idaho, Chickasaw, Alabama, and Ohio State University? Would you choose to pay for such a vehicle in your community? Will going to a city council meeting and voicing your concerns change anything? The folks who claim a legitimate right to initiate force are indoctrinated and trained to utilize just one tool, force. The most sure way to change things for the better is not through the ballot box nor the cartridge box, but through sharing ideas. Those of us who value peace and consensual interactions are not up against a faceless monolith called government or the state, but bad ideas which are being acted upon by individuals. The current placement of MRAPs across the states was facilitated by fear, which underpins the entire so-called war on terror. Work to create a better reality. Don't allow yourself to be constrained by that manufactured fear. Think for yourself and then act according to your conscience. If you know someone employed in the military industrial complex or within a police outfit, take the time to have a conversation. Ask them to think about the implications of their actions for us and for future generations. Stop funding programs with which you disagree and stop granting authority to strangers who claim it simply based on their title or attire.
You own yourself. Act like it.